here we are. We made it. We did. We are studying Feng Shui today on our Curiosity Chill. That is right. Feng Shui has been nominated for this lovely poll so many times and has just recently won. Congratulations. It, congratulations, Feng Shui. Congratulations. Everyone say thank you, Feng Shui. Thank so we're gonna put on some like zen chill music that and sounds good. Sounds right right right, right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. uh welcome everybody and the moderators have this first link that we're gonna use to study but but before we begin amelia if i've never been to a curiosity chill before what is this well we st- we poll a subject at the end of each stream to study the following week and then we spend the hour just learning Oh, learning. Learning together. Learning, like like the old-fashioned way where, where you just, like, look stuff up and read it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like school, but more fun. Nice. School, but more fun. So mm-hmm. uh, you guys have all picked the topic. Today's topic is feng shui. Yes. But what is feng shui? Well, I'm glad you asked, Brian. Always do. So feng shui, feng shui is... Let's call it fun shui, feng shall shui we? Feng shui is the use of energy forces to harmonize individuals with their surrounding environment. Ah. So it's basically a way to make your uh, space more harmonized. Okay, so if anybody's setting up their bedroom, dorm room, office, work from home space, you know, whatever it is, and you're trying to figure out exactly where to place everything and how Mm -hmm. to get maximum use, today is a big feng shui day for us at the studio because we are getting a bookshelf we hope hope. Uh, (laughs) and uh, the bookshelf is going to be the last piece of furniture that we're adding uh, so we can do like a final setup of the studio space and take you guys on a tour of it our big plan is to make a uh, welcome video there's a thing called channel trailers where you can do like a little bit of a guided tour is our idea through the space so you guys will be able to uh to check out our space after we take in all these awesome feng shui tips so thank you to everybody who voted last week and at the end of today's stream, we will poll a subject based off your recommendations of what we should study for next week. Yes. So we really appreciate all of your input. And Wayward Stars is back for nine months, which is a Twitch baby. So we say, raise it up right. Teach it to vote. Teach it to vote. And congratulations to everyone in America, because tomorrow we get a president again. Yes. It's been so long since our nation has had a leader, and mm-hmm. tomorrow he'll be back. <laughs> Ventus689, thank you for being here for two months. We got Cheesy Chappers is back for 15 months. Appreciate you. I'm glad you send this love to the whole Deck Art Games fam. You guys are good news. Thank you again to our awesome moderators. We've got a beautiful team of moderators and lieutenants who help us out on Twitch and on Discord, and that is just real good. It is. Also, Deviant Badger is back for... 28 months! <laughs> you didn't want to leave us a chance, huh? And Ruse, thank you so much for the gift sub to Feng Shui. Appreciate you. Hey, so let's do it. Let's, let's dive let's in. Let's jump in. Okay, so this is some beautiful bamboo, mm-hmm. uh, that, which is giving me peace and harmony. Peace and harmony. So I think we're on the right, the right track. Yeah. The Chinese words feng and shui translate to mean wind and water, respectively. This concept derived from an ancient poem that talks about human life being connected and flowing with the environment around us. So what we're really saying is wind and water. Mm -hmm. What is feng shui? The philosophy of feng shui is a practice of arranging the pieces in a living space in order to create balance with the natural world. The goal is to harness energy forces and establish harmony between an individual and their environment. So maybe this could be a good good question to start us off. Mm -hmm. Where is everybody listening from right now? We are in our studio space, which feels a bit like an office. Uh, Are you tuning in from uh, your living room, from a dorm room, a bedroom, your office? A kitchen. A kitchen. Maybe you're on the roof or in your garden. Where are you all tuning in from when you listen to a curiosity chill? Bedroom. Bedroom. And Pakistan specifically. There you go. Bedroom slash gaming room. Oh, you got a gaming room. That's awesome. Living room, bedroom, bedroom, spare room at your friend's house. Okay. All right. Oh, the dinner table. Oh, your apartment, uh, listening in from Kuwait and Minnesota in your bedroom, Germany in your bedroom. All right, we got bedrooms around the world right now. Dining room. From the beach. Oh, Kingo, you're doing it right on the beach. (laughs) 
They're on their roof. Oh, cozy room, sweet. Nice. All right, so today for the for the sake of this curiosity chill, let's use the room that we're in mm -hmm. right now to, to answer some of these questions as we go exploring. Nice. In Asian culture, this philosophy is called the Tao, which translates to mean the way. Taoism is the way of nature and all the basic principles of feng shui reflecting nature. Take a look at the essential principles of feng shui. The commanding position, the bagua, and the five elements. If anybody knows how to pronounce this word better, uh, if, bagua? Bagua. It's, it's my best, that's my best guess, but if, if you speak... Uh, and can translate for me, or uh, rather <laughs> phon <laughs> phonetically explain it to me, because we, we miss, this is our mispronouncing stream, so we're, we're bound to mispronounce some things. Chronic Aquatic is back for 19 months. Bagua? Bagua? Am I saying that? There we go. Bagua. Sweet. All right, cool. Nice, nice. The commanding position is... Would you mind moving this thing away? So um, yeah. Thanks. Okay. The commanding position is the spot in a room that is the furthest from the door and not in direct line with it. Ah. Okay, the commanding position is... The spot in the room that is, that is the furthest from the door but not in direct line with it. It puts you diagonal to the door. Ideally, you should have a clear line of sight to the door. All right, so for everyone who's, whatever room you're in right now, let's see if we can identify what is the commanding position. I guess this would be our commanding position, the corner where yeah. we're going to be putting our bookshelf and everything. That's right. That's Okay, so that's interesting. That's where we've already kind of weighted our, our bookshelf, and we've got a dresser in this corner. It's furthest from the door but not directly in line with it yeah that makes yeah. sense okay so we do have a little thing a little some stuff in the way but not too much <laughs> we yeah. don't have a perfect flow yeah we don't have a clear line of sight that's what we're doing here you guys are you're finding your dresser your cupboard facing towards the tv mm -hmm. you are you're the commander perfect <laughs> nice okay the commanding position is where you want to spend most of your time when you are in that room hmm Hmm. Feng Shui guidelines suggest you determine this dominant position in the, in the room, then place your bed, your desk, or your stove in diagonal alignment, if you can. These hmm. three parts of the house are critical since each represent an essential part of your life, your bed, your desk, and your stove. Yeah, that's very true. Okay. The bed stands for you, the desk is an extension of your career, and the stove represents your wealth and nourishment. Mm. Well, I do like uh, I do like nourishment. Yeah. All right, so here's a diagram, right? Yeah. This is the bed commanding position for good feng shui. So both of these positions are not directly across from the door. Yeah. And they are also. For kind of this diagonal, from and on a diagonal. a diagonal. Yeah, I see that. Okay. All right, all right. The Feng Shui Bagua mm -hmm. map. A Bagua is the Feng Shui energy map superimposed on the floor plan of your home. Mm. The Chinese word Bagua translates to mean eight areas. Each of the eight areas reflects a different life circumstance, such as family, wealth, or career. And each of these areas has corresponding shapes, colors, seasons, number, and earthly elements. At the center of the Bagua, a ninth area is you, representing your overall health and wellness. There are several Feng Shui schools of thought. All of them use Bagua when analyzing your home. However, some may apply the Bagua in different ways. The Western and BTB, Black Sect schools, usually lay the Bagua so that the knowledge, career, and helpful people areas align with the front door of your home. The Flying Stars and other classical schools may orient the Bagua based on the energy of the year or of the compass. All right, so let's check out this here. This is a a diagram from Mindful Design Feng Shui School. We have these nine different blocks. One is wealth, 
your reputation, your partnership, your family, your Tai Chi. Which is, I guess, you. Y yeah, you and your energy. Children. Children. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Knowledge, career, and helpful people. Nice. Well, you are all helpful people, so I see you there. Mm -hmm. And they all have their own names, of course, corresponding. The Bagua Areas. The easiest way to incorporate the Bagua in your life is to identify one to three areas that need the most attention. Do not attempt to work on all areas at once. To strengthen your energy or improve flow in those areas, incorporate Feng Shui suggestions in that particular area. For example, if you want to encourage fertility, you might add metallic, circular table to the part of your house representing children. Interesting. Interesting. So I like that, that it says don't try and do it all at once. Yeah, you to can't. Fo to focus on one to three. Well, I don't know a ton about Feng Shui, but I do know that that's true. You can, you really can't focus on all the areas of your life at the same time. So, so let's look here. Um, between your wealth, your reputation, partnership, family, your own Tai Chi, your children, knowledge, career, and helpful people, what are, what are maybe two or three of these that would be good for, for this space for us? Well, I definitely think that... Um I mean, the one that sticks out to me is helpful people. Yeah, helpful people and knowledge and mm -hmm. career, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, or, uh, I mean, partnership. I mean, our, I feel like a lot of our, our streaming in this space has to do with our partnership. Mm -hmm. All right, let's explore down. Family. This is uh, the area representing your family and new beginnings. The shapes are columnar which is a word I've never seen before, mm. or rectangular. <clears throat> the colors for family are green, blues, and teal. We have a lot of blues in this space. Yeah. The season for family here is spring. The number is four, and the element is yangwood. Ooh. Does anybody know that they have yangwood in their space right now? Hey, Silver Wolf, thank you for the subscribe, and welcome to our channel, friend. We really appreciate your support. I see Weeping Angels back for thir uh, Weeping Angel thirteen is back for five months. Thank you for the greetings. Take your soul is here for two months. Thank you for the Feng Shui resub and J Ray on play. Thank you for being here for five months with Desert Bra back for two whole years. Wow! I'm so grateful for those of you who are here and join us on our streams. Okay, for wealth, it represents wealth, abundance, prosperity. The shape is also columnar and rectangular. The color is purple, the season spring, the number five, and the element yin, yin wood. Oh. Ah. So there's some similarities there, for I'm sure. Just, yeah, I see the overlap with the shapes, mm -hmm. for sure. And are they both spring? Yes. Yes, they're both spring. They both have rectangle <clears throat> column shapes. Is anybody in a purple room right now? It, that, that purple room may represent some wealth coming your way. Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing that we could rhyme with wealth is health. <laughs> so, it's not the only thing, but it's one of the things. It's one of it. Anyway, early morning, <laughs> representing your health, your overall wellness, and the center. Shapes are flat and square. Well, a lot of you have purple or, or light purple. I see some pink. Pink might be its own. Let's see if we find pink here. The colors for health are brown, orange, and yellow. Hmm. Transitions between the seasons, also the number five, and the element of earth. Hmm. Helpful people. Representing helpful people, benefactors, travel. The shapes are circular and spherical. The colors are gray and metallics. The season is autumn. The number six and the element Yang Metal. Hmm. hmm. And Yaga, thank you very much. Appreciate your kind messages, friends. Yeah. And those of you who've played Detroit, I'm grateful you enjoyed the characters so much. Thank you for tuning in and joining us on Twitch. If your energy of attention is children, you also are representing completion, joy. The shapes are circular and spherical. The colors are white and metallics. Mm. The season is autumn. The number is seven. 
and element is yin metal. We're going to learn about yin and yang metals and yeah. woods soon. I, mm -hmm. I need to learn about that. Is anybody in a, a white room or a room with lots of metal as a predominant color and feature? Ooh, knowledge. Knowledge. It's also representing self-cultivation and skillfulness. The shapes are flat and square. The colors are dark blue. Season is transitioned between the seasons. The number eight and the element Yang Earth. Nice. Fame. Trying to dial up that fame, my friends? Well, let's look to representing our reputation, our passion, and our visibility. The shapes are triangular and pointy. The color, red. Is anyone in a red room right now? Ooh. Red is a very bold choice. Very. We have some maroon elements, but we don't have a lot of red elements in no, our home. No, yeah, we don't have a lot of red. The summer season, the number nine, and the element of fire are also associated with the fame mm -hmm. concentration. Well, our front door is kind of red. Yeah. 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 Maroon. Yeah, yeah. maroon. Mm -hmm. Here's your career. Ooh. Okay. Path in life. The shape is wavy and curvy. The color, black. The season, winter. The number, one. And the element of water. 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 I like that. You know, uh, associating career and water, I think, is really important because mm -hmm. younger Brian would have had a really hard time with the idea of your career being like, a fluid, evolving, changing Curvy shape. Curvy thing. You know, a thing without a real identifiable shape. I was trying to make my career ideas very rigid, you know, and, and sort of like building blocks. And uh, if I can throw it out there, uh, if you're early in your career, don't look for too much of a shape. Just keep mm -hmm. following what you enjoy the most and what's working for you because yeah. uh, getting too rigid with it is definitely was an obstacle for me career-wise. For sure. How about our partnerships? Mm. This represents our partnerships, our marriage, and our self-care. I like that your partnership to yourself is identified there as yeah, a, a very too. important relationship. True. A shape is flat or square. The colors are pink. There oh. we go. I saw somebody called out they had a pink room. Well, maybe your room is good for your partnership energy. And your self-care. Your seasons are transitioning between the seasons with the number two and the element of yin earth. All right, so we really need to understand this yin and yang, earth and wood, etc. Here are the five elements. Fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. Hmm. Hmm. Look at that. Yeah. The five elements, earth, metal, water, wood, and fire, come from the Taoist tradition. The elements are five interrelated phases in life that work together to create a complete system. Typically, the practice of Feng Shui works to balance these five facets in your home and each of your life areas or bagua. To incorporate the elements in your life and your home, you have to define where you want to focus your energy. Much like the Bagua, you choose the one to three areas of your life that you want to improve. Then you strengthen your energy and your home's energy by adding the suggested colors or shapes to that room. Okay. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Very cool. So a uh, reminder <clears throat> that you have to watch the fifth element and it will improve your life. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> he just hijacked it. <laughs> Gotta go. End of the stream. All right. All right. For example, your Bagua shows that your bedroom aligns with your health, overall wellness, and the place where you rejuvenate. It ties into the earth element. Consider ways to incorporate earth tones, ceramic or clay pottery st stones or crystals in that room. After you have made improvements there, focus on a couple of other rooms or areas in your life. 
Look at the corresponding elements in those rooms and welcome that positive change into your life by adding those elements. The intent is to bring positive energy to those rooms, to those areas of your life, and ultimately, your entire home. Ah, so if a lot of us were tuning in from our bedrooms, mm -hmm. let's look around our space and see what kind of shapes and textures and colors we see mm -hmm. if you are specifically in your bedroom. Yeah. What do you see around you? A lot of you mentioned the colors on the walls, but what about the colors of the comforter or of the pillows, mm -hmm. of the things that you keep on the walls? What are you seeing around? You see a lot of grays, oh, a lot of grays. Jacob Hill? Are they are they earth tone grays, like stone grays? Are they more metallic grays? A lot of white and wood rectangles. I see. Purples, pinks, and whites. Here's this blue. Lots of rectangles I'm seeing. Mm. So that's good because the rectangular shape is about, um, uh, what was it? Uh, fame and yourself at the center, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Your Tai Chi. Yeah. No. What? No. Tai Chi? No. Fire element, which is all about fire. All right, look, we're searching for rectangles this here. One. Let's find it here. Yes. That's triangle. So That's passion, pointy. visibility, reputation. That's fire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Lots of mint green, circular, white and metal. Lots right. of rectangles. Well, cool. Bringing our awareness to our environment will help us make some adjustments if there's any of these things you want to dial up or dial down as we go on. Mm -hmm. Sweet Chrisabel, welcome back for five months. Liz Ann for 15. And Re3 and Bloody Shion, thank you for the cheers. We appreciate you being here with us, friends. Mm. Chrissy's here for 13 months. And Weathercat, thank you for the cheers. Hey, M.E.K. Sama is back for 27 months. Hey, and Shinra Dog for 11. Chicken good, multi-pass. <laughs> <laughs> right. Earth. Right, oh. here's where we are, right? We, no. Yes, yeah, we're going through the elements. Yes. Okay. All right, Earth. This is Earth elements. The qualities of Earth are grounded, self-care, stable. Their shapes are flat and square, colored in brown, orange, and yellow transition between the seasons and reflecting the areas of health, knowledge, and partnerships. Mm. If around you, you see much metal. Mm. That is a quality of efficientness, precise, and beauty. The shapes are circular and spherical. The colors are white and metallic. The season is autumn, and the areas are Helpful people and children. Oh, children can be helpful sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Water. The qualities are downward, flowing, and shifting. The shapes are wavy and curvy. And the color, black. Hmm. Not the color I would have associated with water, but I, no. see, I guess I see what's going on. The season is winter, and the area is career. How about wood? Expansive, vitality, upward. Shapes are columnar and rectangular. The colors are green and blue. The season is spring and the area is family and wealth. Nice. Well, we have, we have some- We definitely have wood, wood. around. Yeah. We have some cool dark beams above us mm -hmm. in the ceiling and the floor is Our wood. Our desk is wood. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I mean, this yeah. is a very a very woody kind of a room. And so. you do also have columns and rectangles. I mean, the wood beams are columns and rectangular. And also the shape of the, the space, I mean... It's kind of triangular. In yeah, fact. it's triangular, which fits with the fire element. Fire. The qualities are passion, illuminating, brilliant. The shapes of triangle and pointy color red, season summer and area... Fame. <laughs> Very cool. What an interesting. So this is an interesting overview. Uh huh. Now I think we can get a little bit more in depth, right? Yeah. Cobwebs and flies. Welcome back for a year and a half. We are grateful to have you join us whenever you can. We are streaming six times a week right now, so you're welcome to join whenever you like. And uh, later tonight we'll be playing some Cyberpunk 2077. Mm -hmm. We are completing Gris, which is a very awesome game. Uh, we are playing this, ooh, it's huge. 
Oh no. Resize. I just want to show my friends the full image. <laughs> Please. Huh. Well, this is my life. Here we go. Shrink it. There we go. Gris is an awesome game that we are playing the finale of on Wednesday. We'll be completing it. And we are going to be... What do you need? I'm trying to find it. Go back to the top of this. Okay. Um, and we are going to be playing a new game starting on next Sunday. So this Sunday we will complete our playthrough of Cyberpunk. And we will begin next week, Tell Me Why, which is a new awesome game. What are you looking for? You want to go to the landscape school? I mean, I don't I don't know. You want to go back to it? This has a whole bunch of different things that we can look into. This is just one of the... Okay, well, let's uh, do one thing at a time. And um, we are playing Resident Evil on Saturday. And on Sunday, we finish up... Oh, God, all these tell me why. Tell me why. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> tell me why. Tell me why. Yep, yep, yep. Anyway, I digress. Okay, back to whatever we were. Where was the other tab? Feng Shui. I know, but I you got so many tabs open, you guys. You know that life? You know the too many tab life? Okay, what would you like to click on here? Um, I don't know. What do you want to click on? <laughs> I, was, I was looking. I thought you were looking for something in particular. Um, I'm just trying to con complete this. That we did. We read this entire I know, article. But you're moving really fast. This makes me kind of queasy. Ah. All right. Okay, I have to move this slowly because when it's not even that slowly. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, there's different things that we can look into. Um. Maybe. How about? Do you want to learn about the history of feng shui, or do you want to get more tips? for specifically uh, feng shuiing your home. <laughs> what are y'all interested in? Shall we learn more about the history or tips? More tips? Okay. History would be cool. Mm. Okay, how about let's, let's, let's look at these feng shui rules. Rules for every room in your home. Ooh, this is a nice space. Very calming. And then maybe we'll end it with history. I see a lot of wood. I see a lot of rectangles for sure. Mm -hmm. And white also. A lot of white and brown. And a pretty clear path to the door. Definitely a clear path to the door. Mm -hmm. even, even you can see the coffee table is literally clear, so you can't you see, can see right through it. Yeah, or you could walk right into it when you're not paying enough attention. That's mm -hmm. what I feel about a clear coffee table. With our fast-paced lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. With our fast-paced lifestyles, we're longing for more ease, good health, and happiness, and seeking ways to incorporate wellness in our minds, bodies, and especially our everyday life. This extends to our homes and physical environments. Luckily, Feng Shui techniques and adjustments can support us to create a more peaceful and nourishing life. Feng Shui is mindfulness of our spaces. If you're ready to incorporate better flow and wellness to your everyday life, here are some Feng Shui guidelines for every room in your home Perfect. To, to create a home that is in harmony with Feng Shui. These essential tips for decorating every room in your house will help promote good energy. All right, we want some good energy. Give us those good vibes. Your entry foyer. The entry of your home is called the Mouth of Kui. This means that the front door is the portal for all the Kui, or life force energy, to enter your home and your life. It is one of the most important areas to look for Feng Shui. Mm. So let's consider our own entry to our house. Make sure the entry is brightly lit. Keep the area free of clutter. Chi, pronounced chi. Mm -hmm. There we go. Sweet. 
Be I mean, sure. that makes more sense. I've heard chi. I've never heard yeah. anybody say, get your sent to your qui. <laughs> First thing I thought of was quill. You know, I have spoken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, be sure that the doorbell is functioning properly. It is not. It is not. Uh, we do not have a functioning doorbell. No, okay. Does, does anyone here have a functioning doorbell? Poll in the chat. If you got a doorbell, we just text people and they text us. You guys remember when people used to come over? Back in the day? Well, we definitely, <laughs> yeah, and the bright light, yeah, okay. So Your doorbell works, your entry is dark. All right, maybe there's a way you can, can you brighten up that entryway? Can you make that functioning doorbell <laughs> really sing? <laughs> All okay. right, let's, let's move on to our living rooms. You repaired it yesterday? Amazing. Oh. Good for you. You've improved your quichi. <laughs> Arlo Baxter, thank you for being here. And Dragon Lord, we, or, we appreciate you guys subscribing. You're, you're Queechee. Well, what's wrong with him? All his Queechee's all messed up. He got all Queechee'd. Um, your doorbell works, but it's too loud. Yeah, that can be startling, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That does not give you good Queechee. Uh... <laughs> Uh, so Lonther, thank you for subscribing with your Prime. We really appreciate you being here. If you guys have Amazon Prime, you can link it to Prime Gaming for a free subscription anywhere on Twitch. All right. Pumpkin well. Tiger, thank you for being here for 30 months. And Carol2404 is back for five. Thank you, friends. You're going to call it that forever now? Oh, the I'm Quichi. sorry. Oh, God. Okay. So the, the, Honestly, a Quichi sounds like... Yeah. Quichi sounds... <laughs> Quichi sounds like... I don't want to tell it, you. It kind of sounds a little bit like squeegee. It sounds a little like squeegee. It sounds a little bit like... A little naughty. It sounds a little like unpleasant. Yeah. Like okay. like you're not feeling well. Well... You're like, oh, squeegee. <laughs> 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 I gotta go. I gotta go home, guys. I squeegee. <laughs> Living room. Uh, living room, yeah. <clears throat> Back to business. We are professionals. The living room is a space where inhabitants Queechee... No, 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 no. The living room is a space where inhabitants of the home can gather with friends and family. It is typical of a more public space. Ideally, you want to keep it open and inviting. All right, so our, a living room space can be open and inviting, and here's a checklist. All right. So you want to use the five elements colors to decorate your living room based on the energy that you would like to cultivate. You can also add green house plants to invite more wellness, growth, and kindness. I do like house plants in a room. Configure the sofa and or chairs in the commanding position, which we learned is diagonal from the front door but not directly in line with not it. directly in line and meme lord 1275 thank you for subscribing to our channel welcome 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 hmm. so the dining room mm -hmm. the dining room is a room that not a lot of people have i feel like anymore or if you have an apartment a lot of times the dining room is what gets snipped out or yeah. com combined into the kitchen so maybe your dining space is a part living room or part kitchen space the dining room is where we gather to eat and nourish together. It is a time to connect and check in with our loved ones. And it also represents friendships. Oh, I like that. A dining room checklist. If the dining table is also used for other purposes, be sure to clear it off for meals. Does anyone have a very crowded dining room table we have to do that we have to yeah. get things off that table mm -hmm. we use it sometimes for a desk or for projects for sending mail yeah sometimes it gets a little cluttery uh but you want to use the dining table for a meal on a regular basis to attract more friendships into your life nice nice yeah i used to eat a lot more meals like kind of just sitting on a chair or on the couch or you know like around and i really like having a designated dining space it feels yeah. good to sit in one routine place your dining room table is a terrible mess well heather maybe after the stream is a uh, time to give it a once over you know and mm -hmm. uh, tidy up a bit yeah. uh fresh flowers can be offered to invite energy and unstick any of our connections to others in our lives mm. so fresh flowers are nice does anyone have fresh flowers in their environment right now 
Hmm. And near, let's go into the kitchen, which is closely associated with the dining room. Another one of the most important feng shui rooms in the home is the kitchen, which represents wealth, abundance, and health. How well we eat directly relates to how we show up in the world. The stove is specifically connected to your prosperity and wellness. Mm. So make sure that the stove is clean and in good repair. Okay, the, we need to clean we our need to stove. Clean stove yeah. The stove is the one that gets overlooked the most for us. Everything mm -hmm. else gets cleaned, but then by the time you clean all that, you look at the stove and you're like, nah. Yeah, it's because it's a it's a big undertaking. You gotta take those heavy things off. Grates, uh, yeah, yeah you scrub under there, get some sticky stuff in there. Well, we should clean the stove. Now I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna today. go home and clean the stove today. This stream's terrible. You guys just told me to clean my stove. <laughs> All right, you can use your stove at least once a day. Uh huh. Even if it's just to boil water. Oh. Okay. You want to keep the energy active. Okay, when was the last time you used your stove? Anybody got a stove that hasn't been touched in over a, a happy month? I feel like usually I use the stove at least once a day. Some, uh, Yeah. Sometimes not, but mostly at Most least Most days. Once. Yeah. I'd say five days out of the week we use a stove. Mm -hmm. And Monkey Pilot, hello! Hello! Back for 32 months, Lieutenant Monkey Pilot. We appreciate you so much. Sending you some good energy. One of our friends from the very beginning of our streams on Twitch. It's awesome to see you tune in. So you can regularly dispose of expired food in the refrigerator and pantry. One thing we've started doing before going to the grocery store is doing a once over in the fridge mm -hmm. to see about that one thing that you were going to forget when you're at the grocery store. You're like, oh, soy sauce. Dang it. We said yeah. soy sauce, but we didn't get it. It's nice to do a once over in your in your fridge before you go out shopping. And then you don't have to have those horrible experiences where you open up a container and you're like, what's... Oh, oh it's Queechy. <laughs> it's filled with Queechy. <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's always a moment. <laughs> you make a list to go grocery shopping? Yeah, me too. Yeah, on our, on our best days. Sometimes it becomes like the same kind of a list each time. You know, you go you start like to memorize. Do you go on autopilot through the grocery store? You know, where you're like, oh, I can skip that aisle entirely. I don't need that one. Yeah, and I definitely have a a, a route, mm. a specific route. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, your freezer had a leak in lockdown. Oh, oh that no. can be a quite a quite a situation. Yeah. Uh, you sent in a game suggestion. Thank you very much, Arsiba. We have a panel down below the video that says exclamation point games on it. If you'd like to check it out, or there we go. Puppet Cur's got the link in the chat for you if you'd like to formally recommend a game. We pick a lot of our games, almost all of them, based off your recommendations. Oh, you shop hungry. Yeah, I can't shop hungry oh, then no. I get everything. <laughs> yeah, or you end up start eating the food while you're in line, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. Well, you can't, you can't anymore. anymore yeah, yeah, now with the masks. Mm -hmm. Hey, Spider Ann, thank you for being here for six months. We appreciate you. All the right. topic yeah. today is Feng Shui. We're talking about the energy and the orientation of our uh, the objects in our living spaces and the correlation they have to the different parts of our lives. So the family room is another gathering spot that's a little bit more private. It's a nice room for the family to spend time together. Oh, well... Well, yeah. Is anyone tuning in from their family room right now or could be called the living room? In your family room, ensure that there is a seat for every person in the home. Okay. I mean, that's fair. Can you imagine? They're like, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Ernie, but you'll have, to, you'll have to sit on the tiny little stool. <laughs> That we have, I mean, lucky for us is just you, me, and that wheeze. Yeah, and we don't have a family room. I think that's for a bigger, a bigger home. Yeah. yeah. But we have a space for everyone to sit. Yeah, we do. Um, Use the five element colors to decorate based on the energies that you want to cultivate in the home. Okay. A rug can be placed in the center of the room to connect and ground the family. Nice. A rug will also keep your floor warmer. If it's getting really chilly. Yeah. Amit, thank you very much for the gifts up to Ice Clouds. We appreciate you being here and thank you for your generosity. All right. Now most of you are tuning in from a bedroom. So let's let's really do our good work on, on bedrooms here. Mm -hmm. It is a great place to start with bringing Feng Shui into your home. Because this room, 
represents the person that sleeps there. Feng Shui adjustments in the bedroom can work quickly and effectively here because you spend the majority of your life sleeping in your bed. True. Bedroom checklist. Place your bed in the commanding position. If it's not possible, correct for it. Okay, so the commanding position, again, for anyone just joining us, is uh, diagonal from the door, but not directly across. So, Yeah, so we... fur furthest from the door, not yeah. directly across. Yeah, we that's, got that. That's we where our bed that. is, yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> Let's remove any storage or clutter from underneath the bed. Ideally, it is completely open to air and key. Uh, chi. Chi. Yeah. Qui chi. Circulation. <laughs> Uh, we have some storage under our bed because we live in a small apartment. So you may have to have some storage, but is it orderly or yeah. is it cluttered or mm -hmm. kind of crazy? I remember when I was younger, I used to have a lot of stuff shoved under my bed. Me too. I would but, just shove things. <laughs> but now we have uh, we have two drawers yeah, under our so bed. Yeah, so it's more it's more uh, more orderly. It looks clean from the outside anyway. Dyslexicon, welcome back for 15 months, a milestone. Thank you for being here. And, um, Ofti, Ofti Chimera. Chimera, thank you for being here with your Prime. We appreciate you subscribing to our channel. Thank you, friends. And if you guys are new to the channel, check out the starter kit. There's a panel down below the video that looks a little something like that. And it'll show you the way around our Discord, how to use all the perks of being with us on Twitch. So you also want to make sure that you have a headboard that's securely attached to the bed. We do not we have do a headboard. We do not have a headboard, no. So we need it. Uh, I need it. All right. <laughs> Guys, I got to go get my wife a headboard. <laughs> well, we have a window that's right there. I know, it's but like we tricky. need a different kind of... Okay, we need a little tiny headboard. A mini board. Okay. All right, let's talk about our home office, because a lot of people are working from home these days. This could apply, perhaps, to our streaming studio space. Mm-hmm. The home office is especially important if it is the main office space or if you work often from home. Your office space and the desk symbolizes your career. Therefore, the feng shui in your home office greatly affects the su success in your work. Okay. Place your desk in the commanding position. Nope. If that's not possible, correct for it. If we did, we'd be facing too far away from the light, I think. Yeah. And there's not an. We have one wall is where we have our desk because that's also where we've got the internet mm -hmm. hardwired in. Yeah. Um, and if we had it in the commanding position, we'd have that funky door behind us. We're also in a room, exactly. We're in a room with three doors in it. There's a door to the bathroom and then two doors outside, one of which we don't really use. So no. it, it looks like a door, but it's really more of a wall. Mm -hmm. hmm. Do you have your, do you feel like you have your desk in a good position uh, in your room? Your desk is in your bedroom. All right. Well then does it feel like its own identified space? Check that you use a chair with a back. A desk chair with a back provides more support and everyone can use support in their career. Okay, I feel good about our chair, our yeah. desk chair. Yeah. Uh -huh. Make sure you have at least three feet of space between the desk and the chair. We have, yeah, we can, yeah, we we can gotta, move back three feet more. Yeah, I think the trick is that you don't want to have too much stuff right behind you. Yeah. Or if you, yeah, you could use a yoga ball. It just really depends on what energy you're trying to manifest, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, time for the bathroom. The bathroom has a lot of water element, which can lead to draining away of wealth. No, no, no. Start by keeping the bathroom sparkling clean so it can truly be a spa-like place of rest and recuperation. Mm. I recently did a very deep clean of the bathroom, which was so satisfying. Yes, she did. I did. So, a bathroom checklist having a living green house plant on top of the toilet can transform the downward energy into upward life energy because plants grow and flourish with water. Oh, ah. we could probably put, there's enough yeah. light in the bathroom for a plant. Does anyone have a plant in their bathroom? I do like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, as long as they get enough light, 
Mm -hmm. um, with the drill, exactly. So this is what I wanted to show you guys when Amelia mentioned it. Oh my God, yeah, it's the most amazing. Okay, if you don't know that this exists yet, you're about to. What is it? What is it? It is a, <laughs> this looks, in... <laughs> it looks a little intense, but Amelia and I just learned about this from our other friend Amelia, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, that you can put a drill bit that has a brush on it and this will clean like it's so nice. So nice, so satisfying. I'm gonna drop the link in the chat in case you really want it. This is like 10 bucks, you get all of those, but be careful when you check them out. There's different colors of these brushes for different toughnesses of what you're cleaning. So like this yellow is good for bathroom tile, it's somewhere in between, but there's ones that are much more coarse for things like outdoor grills or barbecue. And then you have other ones which are much lighter if you would like to do something, uh, you mm -hmm. know, that's uh, softer and uh, not, uh, it will get some scratches. Yeah, it is life changing, I agree. Make sure you have a power tool that is uh, nice and Charged. Make sure you yeah, yeah, charge your batteries. <laughs> um, so another thing is to keep the toilet seat shut when it's not in use. Because otherwise, your bad son named Theodore will put him dirty little mitts in there, and then he's walking around with toilet water feet. Yeah, our cat likes to stick his yes. paws in the water. Uh, the toilet, it's one is... of the reasons we call him the weasel. <laughs> Does anyone else's cat or dog spend too much time around the toilet? Yes. Also, you want to keep the mirrors clean so they reflect with clarity. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah. It's time for us to clean the mirrors yeah. or the window. I thought about that. I was like, we haven't cleaned the windows from the outside in a long time. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Closets. Mm. Amelia, you, you love closets. Tell them about I closets. I do. Closets can represent hidden areas of our lives and need attention just as much as the living spaces. Closet checklist would be to regularly declutter and donate anything that is no longer needed. Sweep out the dust bunnies that accumulate in the hidden corners. Keep a little space open rather than packing the closet completely full. This well, this way you send the message to the universe that you have space to invite new opportunities into your life. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely important to leave some empty room. I feel one of my favorite things about cleaning, and I do like to clean, is to have a totally clear countertop. Mm -hmm. If I can see, like, it's like you go into a museum and there's, like, a whole counter with three things on it. Like, that's my aesthetic. I yeah. want that. That's what we're trying to accomplish here in the studio space. To, to invite more, more energy and so that everything has its own room. Mm-hmm. And it's not cluttered. Um, well, our hallways are another space that can get easily cluttered, usually because they're narrow. Mm -hmm. Hallways are like the arteries where we circulate the chi through our homes. Therefore, don't forget to feng shui the hallways. The hallway checklist. Keep narrow hallways clear of clutter. Avoid making them too difficult to walk through as it represents obstacles in our lives. So if you declutter your hallway, that could be a quick way to help clear the flow of your overall mm -hmm. home. Photos and artwork are great in hallways, especially long ones. And be sure that the hallways are well lit. Mm. Nice. Okay, so I'm curious. What are some things that Hello, you Hello lady. Hi, Hi lady. lady. What are some things that you learned today about feng shui and how to better set up the energy and the energy in your house and your space? Pop quiz. Pop there it quiz. is. Don't worry, you're not being graded. Just share one thing that you've learned during today's feng shui exploration. And of course, there's much much more we could get into mm -hmm. and discover about feng shui, but each of these curiosity chills allow us to take a brief overview and explore a different topic that you might want to study on your own. Mm -hmm. And the mods have this link to the spruce.com that they've been sharing in the chat if you'd like to read deeper on your own. Uh, the commanding spot. Yes, I learned about that too, about the, the space where your eye goes immediately, about their different room colors that you need more plants, that the color to represent water is black. Yeah, I was surprised about that. Keep everything and clean and clear for good flow. 
that, uh, that colors mean a lot for the different things in our lives. Better lighting in the hallway. Yeah, brightening up a space makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can just change out a light bulb. Put in a brighter light bulb in, in yeah. an existing lamp and you might find you enjoy the room more. That you need to reconsider how your room is laid out, yes. Mm -hmm. And not to focus on all of it at once. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things that I took away from the very beginning here that we're talking about. You know, if you're going to have an area of attention, mm -hmm. it has to actually exclude other areas for it to be an area of attention. If we have our attention on everything, yeah. we actually don't have our attention focused enough to be useful. Mm -hmm. So maybe again, we can look at these before we raid about these different areas of our life where we'd like to focus. Yeah. Uh, knowledge, career, family, your children, helpful people, partnerships, your reputation or wealth. And all of that centers around you, your chi, your energy. So picking one to three of these to focus on gives us a nice launching point. Yeah, let's do that for the next week before, uh, before we come back on next Tuesday's stream. We can do, uh, let's pick an area of attention. Yeah. I'm going to put my area of attention on my helpful people. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. I'm going to think about helpful people. Find the helpers in the next week. Mm -hmm. And we'll come back and we'll check in with it there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, Emmy, we are always rating people uh, at the end of each of our streams, which brings me to my next question. Where shall we raid? I see Vorkot is here with the cheers. Hello, Vorkot. It makes me happy to see your name. And Katharina, thank you for being here for 32 months again from the very beginning. If you guys would like to help us decide where we should raid before we determine what we study next week, you can type one in the chat for The Last of Us. <laughs> number two, for painting portraits. Or number three, for a nice chill Sims 4. Let me know what you think, and we will raid over there together. Thank you all for voting in the mainstream chat on Twitch. And while we're at it, let's shout out some ideas of what we might study together on next week's Curiosity Chill. Yeah. What are you going to be? A reminder that our next stream is later tonight. We're continuing the main story quests of Cyberpunk 2077. On Wednesday, we'll complete the game Gris, which is a beautiful, beautiful game with incredible music. I really am enjoying it. Oh, yeah. Uh, we are playing uh, on Zen Garden Friday stream. We're working on our birdhouse. You guys are sharing your recommendations and design ideas for our birdhouse that we're building together. And on... Saturday, Resident Evil 2, Claire's Path. We're very near the end of that. Sunday will be the finale of Cyberpunk 2077 before next week we begin Tell Me Why by Tell Don't why. Not. Don't Not is the creators of uh, Life is Strange. So if you enjoyed that game, you might be down for some Tell Me Why. All right, it looks like it's going to be painting portraits. Love it. So here are some really cool ideas about what we can study next week carnivorous plants Ooh, carnivorous fun. meaning meat eating plants uh women inventors that sounds cool um uh polar bears origami oh okay um bioluminescence sheep <laughs> I think we did one on bioluminescence, in fact. I remember we did. Sheep! Sheep. What else could we study? Um. Ooh, these are fun. Fun, fun, fun. We did the history of Dungeons and Dragons. We did, we did. Mm. We've done lots of mythology streams. We should... Tarot? Tarot cards, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, tarot! All right, this is, this is good. Five yeah. is good. <clears throat> All right, Amelia, what do we got here? Okay, what shall we study next week? Shall we study one for carnivorous plants? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which are meat-eating plants. Like a Venus flytrap. Uh-huh. Two for origami. Three for female inventors. Four for sheep. Or five for tarot. Cool, cool, cool. Which could be the tarot root or the tarot cards. <laughs> Just tarot. Mm-hmm. Toto Tarot. Yes. An oft, uh, ofti chimera. Ofti 
Tea Chimera. Thank you very much for this nice donation. Uh, since I'm finally catching one of your streams live, here's a little gift and best wishes from Germany. Thank you to you. Uh, thank you very much, mein Gott. And to anyone who's tuning in from Germany, hello especially, and around the world, you guys are awesome. We're so grateful to have you here with us. Looks like tarot cards are yeah, going to take lead. the day. Uh, and a lot of love for these other categories, too. What an, that's a nice balanced split. Usually we don't see it so even like that. Yeah, yeah. All right, it looks like it's going to be tarot and tarot cards. If anybody else wants to vote, now's your chance to do so before we raid over. And if you've never done a raid before, all you got to do is stay right where you are. We are going to teleport over to a portrait painting channel together and show them lots of positive vibes, good emotes. If you like what they're up to, drop a follow and let them know that we appreciate what they're up to. Yes. All right. So we all see you uh, for our next Curiosity Chill. We're going to be studying tarot cards and maybe even the tarot root because I like tarot root. Gotta cover them all, you know? <laughs> and uh, origami is another one that... that second position mm -hmm. origami could be a really fun thing to do on a friday stream yeah friday zen stream so, so we maybe we'll do that uh on a friday zen stream sometime soon you guys can always check out the schedule panel on our page or there's a little a countdown below the video that'll let you know when we're live next we appreciate you joining so much again thank you to our awesome moderators our my lieutenants love. my love appreciate you lieutenant love you guys are awesome all right, friends, it's time for a raid. My name is Brian. My name is Amelia. And this, this is, is our, our Twitch. Twitch. Let's raid in three, two, one. Raid! raid!